This is a video demonstration of how to use Twilight Struggle playing, uh, playing using Vassal. Um, I'll assume that you've downloaded the Vassal Engine program, which lets, you, which lets you open modules, which are downloadable from the website, the Vassal Engine me website under Modules. And then you click on T for Twilight Struggle, and download. I like uh, this one seems to be the most popular right now. And the way you can tell, um, well, I'll show you how to tell what version people are using in a second here. So when you open Vassal, uh, you want to turn on the server status so you can see other people that are playing. And when you first turn it on, it's slid over here like this. You've got to adjust the screen like that. <coughs> you go to File, Open Module, and then open the uh, Twilight Struggle module. And that's what it looks like when you go online. You'll be in the main room here. And you type a name there, and go down to uh, the name. It'll automatically put you in the room. And you select File, and then <coughs> Standard Game, or whatever you want. And I'll select this guy to be the Soviet player. And on another machine, I will right-click and sync on the other player and select synchronize. So, on my machine, and that way both um, players are seeing the same map. So I'm just going to show you now how the basic module works. Um, I kind of remember the basic player sequence, but uh, here's where the deck of cards are. And then you open up your player hand and you draw cards into your hand from the early war deck, which is here, the mid-war deck is here, which is added later in the game, and the late war deck is here. Oh, you're up scoring. That's always fun. Okay, so the first thing that happens in every turn is the adjustment, uh, or during the setup, you adjust the um, influence on the different countries. So uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the setup information here just to get an idea who goes first. So the USSR player places a total of 15 influence markers in the following countries. Syria, one in Iraq, three in North Korea in East Germany, one in Finland, and six anywhere in Eastern Europe. So you can see the uh, ones already required by the game are set up for you. And uh, to set up Eastern Europe, we will um, increase the influence here. It's one. Two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. And then the American player will adjust their influence. And on another screen, I will right click at a total of 25, and I get to play seven anywhere. So um, at look at East Germany, and you'll see as the American player increases his influence over there, it will change the uh, control of that particular country. So it flipped from red to white, which means the Russian player does not have control anymore. So that's one. Two. Four. Okay. So that's my seven. 
So if you look at the uh, Europe scoring marker up here, you can no notice that the American player has domination right now. So this is an important factor for you to watch as it changes back and forth. Um, if the American player had the Europe scoring card right now, it could be bad trouble for the uh, Russian player as they would get seven points. So let's go ahead and uh, see how the game starts playing. I'm going to draw up uh, my hand on the other side. Okay, so I've drawn up my hand on the American player side, and now I decide which card I'm going to play as my headline event. So I pick on any one of these cards, and I right-click, and I select Play as Headline Event. Now the American player will do the same thing. Okay, and you'll see the cards both are on the board. And now we uh, do Flip. American player will flip his. On the other screen, which you can't see. Okay, so um, now you um, play for the event. Oh, I can't remember. Hold on for one second. Yep. So the the number who goes first is determined by the play uh, the the number of operations points up here. We're going to play this for the event. And most of the things on here are automatically filled out for you. So now the American player will come back and play his event. And so now the American players played their card, and that's it for the headline phase. So now we click on the little clock. We click on the advance marker here. And it discards the cards for us, and now it is round one Soviet turn. So this will help us keep track of the game and what's happening in the game. So now uh, we look at our cards, we decide what we want to play, and we right-click on a card, and we either play it as an event, which automatically happens if the event is controlled inside the game, or if it's something you ha manually have to do, you'll have to select which countries you want to place your thing, or place uh, play it for two operations. So I'm going to show how the operations work first. And since it is a Russian card, no American play will happen. Now the American player will play their card. And we're going to... Um, I can't really see this, but... I'm going to play for operations, too, just to, to show how it works. Okay, so our other options now. Um, are to play a card as a space race. So we basically want to discard this. And you'll see that uh, the space race marker is moved up if it's successful. The, uh, unfortunately, the space race was not successful here, so that part is automatic for us. And uh, that is it. Uh, you'll notice the uh, the board is updated to say that we I've played a space race card. Uh, somewhere on here it is. It might be at the top. And now it's the American player's turn. Okay, so the American player is going to play Red Scare Purge.
So now all further operations played by your opponent are minus one to their value. Okay, so you'll notice that's automatic. So uh, we'll advance the turn track. And now when I play this for an, uh, ops, it says play for two ops now. So America's in the lead here, but we're going to take a look at how uh, Europe scoring would work. And we'll score Europe, which I know the Russian player would never do. But you'll notice how um, the scoring marker moved up, the VP changed up, and now it's the American player's turn. So now the American player is going to play a Russian card uh, for the event first, and then play for the ops. So when I right-click on the card, it says play for the event play the event before ops or play the ops before event. So I'm just going to play the event before ops. And it's it's basically updated the game there. And now the American player uh, gets to place their ops for playing that card. So you'll notice at the top of the game here, the um, the turn track is being updated as we go. The marker is being flipped. The turn marker will update as we go here, and I'm pretty sure that the, um, the new deck will be added in as the game uh, progresses too. The space race will automatically uh, upgrade as you play cards into the space race here. Um, it will flip over. I believe that says it, you know the American players already or the Russian players already played their operations card, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, very uh, very automated, very nice, very nice on the scoring. You can look at the board at all times and kind of see who's in control of different areas. Um, 